Okay, I see some folks filtering in. I'm just gonna wait a few more moments. Uh, but everything I say here, I will also put in the chat. So uh, if you feel like you missed part of it, it will be there. All right, uh, welcome to this virtual college fair. This is so incredibly important that you're able to be here to hear from our experts, our panelists, uh, the key to their institution. Uh, they are here as a resource to you. So it is incredibly important that you note that our panelists cannot see or hear you. So they cannot see or hear you out there. So if you have a question for them, uh, the best way to get an answer is to use the Q&A button that's either at the top or the bottom of your screen. So that Q&A button is a way for you to communicate and ask a question during this 45 minute session. Uh, remember that your microphone and your video are off because they cannot see you. So that Q&A is super important. Uh, you can sign up for more sessions, the same place that you signed up for this one. A recording of this is available at strivescan.com forward slash SSDA. I will put all of that information into the chat and we will kick it off right now. Um, whoops, I have, I have, sorry, my screen is not doing what I need it to do. One second. All right, let me stop my share. Sorry, would not let me stop my, my screen share. So we are going to kick it off with San Diego State University. Well, good morning, everybody, or good afternoon, I guess, depending on where you're joining us from. My name is Heidi Wynn. I am a senior admissions counselor at San Diego State University. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start sharing my screen. Hopefully everybody can see that now. Um, I am an alum of San Diego State, so it's always exciting for me to talk about the school to prospective students. Um, so just to start with a little bit about us, we are considered to be a fairly large institution with about 34,000 students. Um, we, that said though, you can walk from one end of campus to the other within about 15 minutes, making it very walkable and easy to get around. We are currently top 35 in the nation for diversity on campus. We are number one in California, number five in the nation for our study abroad programs. We offer about 200 academic majors, about a hundred of which are at the undergraduate degree level. Now, San Diego State is, of course, known for its beautiful weather. Um, it is about three, uh, 360 days of sun, about 75 degrees uh, on average throughout the year. Our campus is located about 10 minutes inland from the airport. Uh, so it's really easy to get around the city. We do not allow freshmen to bring cars on the campus, but other than that, it's just so easy. You can use a trolley, which is like a train. Um, it runs off throughout the entire city. Uh, a few different programs that we have to promote student success. I've already mentioned um, study abroad, but we also have an honors college. Honors college is for students who um, are maybe looking for a more immersive experience. It is a separate application. If admitted to honors, you will be required to st uh, study abroad. You'll live in an honors college with, in a dorm with all the other honors students. Um, and we also have a lot of research going on. We are considered to be a premier urban research university. Uh, undergraduate students are able to participate in research. Um, and right now, some of our undergraduate students are research, doing research in geography, biochemistry, and even studio arts. Some different, some important dates. Now, I, I do want to point out that this is subject to change because most of this was um, pertaining to our students applying for fall 2021. Um, but our application is open October 1st through December 4th. So if any of you out there decide to apply to San Diego State as a senior, when you're senior year, you'll apply sometime between that timeline. We are on the calstate.edu application. We are not on the Common App. Um, so San Diego State is part of the California State University system, 23 public universities in the state of California. We all have one application and the application is based on GPA and test scores. However, for fall 2022, we will not be considering test scores. Um, after that, it has not been decided, uh, but we'll, we'll kind of decide that probably in the next few months. 
Now, when you're applying, you're going to indicate all of your courses that you're taking. We call courses A through G subjects um, that you need to have complete while in high school. So if you're applying to any public university in California, you need to be aware of these A through G course subjects because you need to complete them um, in order to be admissible. Different programs that we have for students uh, for involvement, we really encourage our students to participate outside of the classroom. Um, so we have about 350 student clubs and organizations. We do have an associated students, which is similar to a student government. Uh, we also have Greek life. There are 46 different Greek institutions, um, nine sorority houses, I believe nine to 10 fraternity houses on campus as well. San Diego is, like I said, known for its weather, so a lot that you can do outdoors, uh, student life and recreation. We have a, a beautiful gym, um, an aquaplex, which is a swimming facility. We have also a partnership with um, what we call the Aquatic Center, which is a facility at the beach where students can check out surfboards and kayaks and sailboats, and you can even take classes there for credit. And then we also always love to highlight our athletics. We are a very spirited and very prideful campus. Um, so athletics are a pretty big deal at our school. We are division one, part of the Mountain West division. Um, we offer a number of division one sports, uh, but we also have intramural and club activities as well. Uh, we're probably most known for basketball. We had an unfortunate ending in the tournament, NCAA tournament. However, we had a great season. Um, and then football games are also a lot of fun. As a student, you do get free admissions to any on-campus athletic event. So it definitely is a highlight of our school. And that is all I have. I will put my direct email um, and our office phone number in the chat, but thank you guys for listening. All right, thank you. Definitely throw that into, uh, into the chat. Next up, we have Santa Clara University. All righty, folks. Uh, thank you all for being here with us. Um, my colleagues mentioned, uh, good morning, good afternoon for those of you guys who are joining us. My name is Lorenzo Gamboa. I'm the Senior Associate Director of Admissions at Santa Clara University, the oldest university in the state of California. We're located in the northern area on the land of the Ohlone Muwekma tribe people. And so we like to pay homage and respect to them as they've been, you know, dear and true to what we are and what we do. Uh, we give thanks for being able to learn, work, and pray on their ancestral lands. So thank them. But we are conveniently located right next to the city of San Jose, which is the 10th largest metropolitan city in the country. That means that anything and everything your heart might desire is going to be within access 24 seven while studying at Santa Clara. We are also about an hour south of San Francisco, about 45 minutes from Santa Cruz, which is the closest ocean. So if you wanna be in a major city or you wanna be on the beach or you wanna just be in the Redwood Forest by yourself, then you can do that all, all as well. 55% of the student body is from in-state, 45% from out-of-state. So almost every single state is represented in Santa Clara, but the only one I do not have, North Dakota. So if you know anybody for some reason there, please get them to apply. I need that 50th state. I am looking to also increase international footprint. So that's pretty exciting for the students who come here because this is a global campus you're going to be interacting with. About 80% of our students do get some type of internship here because of the convenient location. Your neighbor here, Google, Yahoo, Lockheed, eBay, NASA, Young, Kim, and Y, Price, Waterhouse, Deloitte, Netflix, YouTube, Facebook, LinkedIn, Tesla, Electronic Arts, NVIDIA, you name it, it's going to be here. We currently have more job offers, more internship offers, and actually current students enrolled at Santa Clara. Now, what makes us a little bit different from many of all other colleagues across the country is that we follow with something called the Jesuit philosophy. We are part of the Jesuit consortiums. So there's 27 Jesuit campuses in the United States. Uh, we like to say that we challenge you not only academically, but mentally, spiritually, and physically to make sure that you become the best individual you can be, and then hopefully learn how to pay it back. So for us, the big component is how do you pay it forward? As you see on the screen, 50% of the student body tells me they're Catholic because that's where Jesuits come from, but 50% does come from every other denomination. The only time I do see the body, uh, student body switch a little bit is during finals week when everybody becomes Catholic to hopefully pass their classes. But at the end of the day, we try to make sure that you guys um, understand anything and everything that you can do. We're gonna get you guys to study abroad, do immersion trips and do community-based learning to get really down and dirty with your education right away. 
aspects i'm very visual so just things of again embracing all different religions and opportunities so that you understand how all of that impacts whatever profession you want to study the educational environment at santa clara we're about a 5500 undergraduates 3000 graduates i am looking to however grow to 6000 by 2025 so i'm growing currently uh, 11 to 1 faculty student ratios. And the nice thing here is we'll only be taught by faculty. You will never see a grad student teaching you here. Your average class is going to be 23 to 24 students with a really, really high retention and four year graduation rate. What's really nice here is that business and engineers can stay here for four, five years, do the four plus one, and get a master's and bachelor's degree. That's why my four year graduation rate is an over 90. Okay. So it's a nice, convenient program for you. And our classes are going to be small and intimate. So really good for those of you guys who really want to be challenged and study, but really bad for those of you guys who want to fall asleep, okay? Because they will notice. We were founded as liberal arts, so we do a lot of that stuff. And if you're creative, incredible facilities for you to enjoy. But if you're that nerdy kind of person like me, you want to get down and dirty in the labs, you can do that as well. We do have a brand new STEM center that is opening up this fall. And we do anything and everything you guys want to do. Uh, but I always encourage, even if you want to come and study business or engineering, take some creative arts courses, especially like theater, that are going to teach you unique skills that employers will really, really appreciate, like how to capture the attention of audience members, how to project your voice, how to do all these things that you're probably not going to get from a textbook. Okay. We are 20 Division I sports, 19 club sports, and over 150 clubs and organizations in Santa Clara. So what do I need? I need bookworms, but I need bookworms who are flexible to go paint your face and get on ESPN every once in a while. Housing, ridiculously nice. We do have a two-year housing program policy now. So all first years and second years, 100% of you will be on campus. And I also have housing all four years if you wish to stay on campus for your choice. We do have traditions like eating. Eating is a huge thing on college campuses. So your freshman 15, your freshman 40, it will happen. So get involved right away. Again, it is the Bay Area. So very, very active, all the world and all the cultures and religions and for me, all the food that you can taste is going to be available 24 seven here. We are only on the common application. We do arts and science, we do business, we do engineering. Most popular majors, communications, counseling, psychology, political science, accounting and finance and marketing, and then civil mechanical and biomedical engineering. But we also, because of our location, computer science is extremely popular here. But I offer CompSci in all three programs. Arts and sciences is more mathematics, algorithms, language encryption focused, business is more data processors, data servers, helping industry leverage modern technology to make better profit. And engineering is civil, mechanical, and biomedical engineering. Okay. This is how we break down your applications. So we'll take a quick snapshot of that so you guys can see it. And then don't forget your deadlines. They are coming up really, really fast. You who are juniors, reality, you are a senior. Your applications open up this year, and you can actually know before the end of this year whether or not you're in. So get a hold of us via all of the social networks and let us know how we can help. I'll turn it over to my colleagues at UCI. All right, thank you. Uh, yeah, next up is University of California, Irving. Hi everyone, thank you so much for being here. Welcome, my name is Kimberly Macias. I am a senior admissions counselor at UC Irvine. I am also a UCI alum. So I graduated from there with a degree in psychology, social behavior and education sciences. So I'm happy to share more information about UCI with you. So UC Irvine um, is part of the UC system where a total of nine undergraduate campuses um, that follow one set of requirements. So you would only have to fill out one application for the UC system and you would just select which UC campuses you want your application to go to. We do encourage students to apply broadly to increase their chances of admission. And with that, with that set of requirements, we do require a minimum of a UC GPA of a 3.0 for California residents and 3.4 for non-residents. And we also require the A through G course requirements. So you have to have your A through G courses met. Um, as a testing update, UCI is not going to be using the SAT or ACT for comprehensive review, selection, and scholarships. So we won't be using this in your admissions process. If you are interested in taking SAT or ACT, you're able to still submit your scores, but we won't be taking this into consideration for your admission. 
So to tell you a little more about UC Irvine, we are located in Orange County. We are in between San Diego and LA. So those are probably the more popular cities that you know in Southern California. We experience 281 sunny days per year and we're 10 minutes away from the beach. Um, a lot of students always ask, where is Irvine? And that is the ideal way to let students know is that in between San Diego and LA, which are the big cities in Southern California, is where we are located. And there is a lot of fun things to do in Orange County. UCI is in a great suburban location, close to a variety of things um, to do in the surrounding communities. There's lots of great shopping in the area. The beach is, again, a 10 minute drive. We're close to Disneyland. The mountains are two hours away. So everything is nearby for our students to be able to have fun off campus as well. And to be able to get more involved professionally and academically, UCI is centrally located in Irvine, California, where many large and well-known companies have established their offices. The LA Times has actually coined Irvine as the next Silicon Beach. And this is in comparison to Silicon Valley for the size and value of our technology community. And many of these companies that you see here also do recruit students to have internships at their uh, companies and eventually do end up having employment opportunities there after they graduate. A unique aspect about UCI is that we are in the shape of a circle in terms of our physical layout. And this is strategically built this way to show pretty much the collaboration between the different academic schools that we have on campus and also to make it easy for students to get around our campus. So often you will find um, students and professors who are in the School of Social Sciences doing research and teaching and learning in the School of Engineering because we do have a collaborative campus. Um, we do offer over 85 majors and over 70 minors. Um, UCI is probably best known in the pre-health and engineering computer science areas, but we also have top majors throughout all of our undergraduate schools and programs. So instead of having large colleges like other institutions have, we do have smaller academic schools. And each of these have their own academic advisors with specialized knowledge in their field. So for example, if you're a student that is majoring in um, psychological sciences, you will be getting advised by an advisor in the School of Social Ecology to be able to give you the best courses and advice that you need throughout your time at UCI. So to highlight a little more some of our notes, unique and notable majors. Our highly selective majors are nursing science, game design and interactive media, business admin and psychology. Um, we do have interdisciplinary majors, which are majors that either bring in two different schools to collaborate and make one major. I'll highlight biology slash education, where you do receive your bachelor's in biological science while at the same time completing your uh, teaching credential throughout those four years. So you don't have to do it afterwards. Um, and our similar but different are majors who maybe at other institutions you've heard of them called differently and we have them at UCI just in a different term. So exercise science is very similar to kinesiology. Psychological science is similar to psychology, which we have three different psychology programs. And film and media studies and literary journalism are very similar to a communications major. And our students do like to be very involved on campus to find their communities. We do offer over 600 clubs and organizations on our campus for students to find their home away from home. We have ASUCIA, which is pretty much like our ASB, similar to maybe a student government that you have at your schools um, that uh, help run a lot of our events on campus as well. For athletics, we do participate in NCAA Division I. We have 18 sports, nine for men and nine for women. These include basketball, baseball, soccer, just to name a few. And we do also have a campus recreation center that offers club sports and intramural sports if you're interested in pursuing that route instead of the um, NCAA Division I route. We also have an esports program. It is uh, UCI is the first public university to create an official esports program. It is regarded as one of the best and most comprehensive in the world. And we offer teams in um, Super Smash Bros, League of Legends, and Overwatch. So if you're interested, you can definitely join in. And lastly, to talk about our housing communities, um, we do have two freshman housing communities, and this includes our newest expansion of the Middle Earth Towers and the Mesa Court Towers. Um, and our students, about 80% of our freshman students do live on campus, even though it's not required to live on campus. So it's just a great opportunity for students to get involved and find their communities um, on campus as well. Thank you so much. And I will drop some more links in the chat for you all to have access to. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of Redlands.
Good afternoon and good morning. My name is Anna Egeter and I use she, her, her pronouns and I'm from the University of Redlands. I'm also joined by my friend, um, Addie. So we have a fun fact. Uh, we have a live mascot um, bulldog at the University of Redlands. We are a campus community of about 2,500 students in Redlands, California. We are just east of the Los Angeles area out towards the Palm Springs community. So we're in a great location that has access to an urban community. Los Angeles is pretty good size, um, as well as the outdoor communities of the deserts and the mountains. Um, in Southern California. You're in a great location for lots of different opportunities. The city of Redlands is a smaller kind of college town um, and we're definitely very well connected to the campus community. The University of Redlands um, and at every college campus, you're wanting to connect with classmates that are similar to you, that have really um, shared interests, but also challenge yourself to meet students in lots of other areas. And at the University of Redlands, we're known for having a very close-knit community, a really strong sense of school spirit, and a lot of that stems from just a very residentially focused campus community. We ask all of our students to live on campus for all four years. Um, about 20% of our students are involved in Greek life. About 25% of our students are involved in varsity athletics. And again, we're known for being a really active and involved um, busy campus. One of the things I will mention that's unique about the University of Redlands is a sense of service and a sense of commitment to service. We actually have it as a, as a requirement to graduate. Um, so it is a, a, technically an academic requirement, I guess you might say. Um, and we believe we're the only non-religiously based university to have this as a requirement. So that sense of how can I get out there and make a difference and make an impact in my community is a very important one. We're a campus community that's very proud to be 51% students of color, as well as about 40% of our students are first generation college going students. We're also current stewards of the native lands of, of Kahila and Serrano um, peoples, and we're very well connected to the local native um, communities in Southern California, including having a scholarship for any students that are connected to um, their native communities. And I have information about that in a minute. Um, we are members of NCAA Division III athletics with 21 different athletic sports and a very strong um, athletic traditions. Right now, both of our golf teams are ranked in the top 10, and I believe last week the women's golf team was ranked number one in the nation um, on Division III. As I mentioned earlier, um, all of our students live on campus, or we ask all of our students to live on campus um, for all four years, and that really creates a strong sense of community um, within um, the, the overall campus. Now let's talk about academics. Um, as I mentioned, we have about 2,500 students at the university, so your average class size is gonna be about 18. Last year, 85% of our classes had less than 20 students in them, so you're really gonna connect with your classmates as well as your faculty in lots of different ways. We have over 40 different academic majors. Quite honestly, this is a pretty usual suspect list of, of majors that you'll see from other um, liberal arts and sciences colleges. But what's a little unique is that you'll notice a number of interdisciplinary, or what we sometimes call interconnected majors, like in, in environmental chemistry, theater business and the like. Um, we really encourage students to think about how do things interconnect together. And that for a student that may have very different interests, you can absolutely pursue those. Um, last year, I worked with a student that was interested in accounting and theater. Now, we're very flexible um, within our curriculum a lot because of the Johnston Center for Integrative Studies. We just call it Johnston. Within Johnston, it's been around for 50 years. It's a progressive approach. It's a college within the university where students build and create their own academic program. It's not for everybody. It's very unstructured. It's very flexible. But for many students, they're excited about that flexibility that they can really explore in lots of different ways. What I love about Johnston is it very much has impacted the rest of campus to allow for that interconnectedness to happen in many ways. We also have a school of music um, and um, students can get involved in the school of music either as a major or as a non-major. Absolutely think about other things that you wanna get involved in. And at the University of Redlands, we always like to highlight our Salzburg campus. We own our own castle in Salzburg, Austria, but also have about a hundred different other programs that students can get involved in. We know that education is an investment no matter where you go. Um, and at the University of Redlands, we really have um, put our money where our mouth is. We have a four-year promise. We call it a, 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 Redlands, a Redlands promise that you're gonna graduate in four years, gonna cross that stage and all of your amazing regalia four years after you arrive. We wanna be sure that you are taking those four years and really um, taking everything in during those four years and taking full advantage of them. But then we send you off into the world.
So let's talk about admissions. We also use the common application. You've heard that already from a couple of institutions. Um, and we're really proud of the fact that we are test optional and test optional forever. Um, so that means that you can decide whether or not you wanna submit your test scores to the university. We work really hard to support students to make sure that you can financially afford and, and, and uh, be a part of the Redlands community without having huge amounts of loans. Um, we know that this is a, a big part of many students' decisions. Over 90% of our students receive some sort of financial aid. And this past year, our average financial aid package was over $46,000 per year. Um, I mentioned earlier, again, our San Manuel Scholarship for Native students. We also have a scholarship called the Hunsaker Prize for students for leadership and achievement, as well as the, your usual uh, merit-based scholarships and talent awards in other areas. It's great to connect with all of you. Um, we'd love to connect with you more and we wish you best in all of your search. And I'm gonna pass things over to my colleague at the University of the Pacific. All right, thank you so much. Okay, hello everyone. Uh, this is Mike Daly, an Assistant Director of Admission at University of the Pacific up in uh, Stockton, California. Um, we are very happy to be here and sharing this time with um, all of you and uh, my colleagues from different parts of uh, California. Um, Cal University of the Pacific is, um, along with Santa Clara, one of the oldest universities in the state of California. So I want to do a little bit of a quick introduction to who we are. Um, first of all, we are a private institution. We were originally founded by members of the Methodist Church, but we are now um, independent of that um, organization, and we are a private independent institution. We have about 6,000 students in total, and those would be breaking down about 3,500 of those undergraduates and about 2,500 in graduate and professional programs. Um, University of the Pacific uh, consists of three separate campuses in three separate locations, our main campus being located in Stockton, California, and um, our Sacramento campus um, just uh, south of the downtown area serves primarily as our law school and our new College of Health Sciences. And then finally, our downtown San Francisco campus serves as our dental school. Um, we are very proud of the fact that we are also um, a very inclusive and very diverse campus community with about 60% of our students uh, uh, identifying themselves as uh, students of color. And we, um, like most private universities, we have a very small student to faculty ratio. Currently ours is about 13 uh, students per faculty member. And then um, our average class size is about 18 students. So it lends itself to a very personalized uh, education experience for our students and a lot of um, support as well in many different areas, both in and outside of the classroom. Um, again, more than 60% of our students are, 60% uh, of our classes have 19 or fewer students. Um, also, we have a very strong focus in our learning uh, system on experiential learning, helping students apply their classroom knowledge into real world um, applications, both through research as well as internships. And a lot of these outside of the class experiences can start as early as their freshman year, lending themselves to helping students not only finish with a degree uh, from a very good institution, but also um, having real world work experience before they themselves enter the job market. Again, uh, just where are we? A lot of people um, from other parts of the state aren't exactly sure where Stockton is, but we are located in uh, Northern California's Delta region, uh, which is about 45 minutes southwest of uh, our state capital in Sacramento and about 80 minutes east of San Francisco. And this puts us in a really good um, location for a number of different things. We're close to a lot of employers where um, our students would like to connect. We are um, also located very close and in uh, the state capital where a lot of important things happen um, both from a legal part of point of view as well as many others and it's also a great location to uh, connect with different parts of the state that you may want to visit during your um, uh, weekends and off uh, class times um, the specific student experience is something that we feel is um, pretty unique to our institution, and it consists of three components, um, invaluable experiences, both in and outside of the classroom, as well as uh, making indispensable connections that can serve students well um, uh, in a variety of different ways during and well after their um, university years. And then, of course, unparalleled opportunities, and these come in the uh, form of both um, a very active student life, as well as um, internships and community service and research that's available um, throughout their 
um, university experience. Um, we have more than 100 different undergraduate programs in a wide variety of um, disciplines, including the arts, the humanities, engineering, pre-professional studies, and the sciences. And some of our top programs include pre-dentistry, as well as a pathway into our professional dentistry program, um, as well as pre-pharmacy and a uh, professional pharmacy school as well. And both of these programs offer accelerated options, lending themselves to help students uh, complete their undergraduate uh, degrees in two, three, or the traditional four years, um, and then three more years for the uh, professional schools. Uh, campus and student life. Um, we are a residential campus, and so we do require our students to live on campus for the first two years. And this really helps lend themselves, uh, lends itself to helping students make a successful transition from home life to university and adult life a little bit more uh, smoothly and successfully, but also helps them become part of our university community, which is very close knit. Um, it also does um, promotes their um, involvement in one of the many different student clubs and organizations. We have very active uh, Greek life, about 20, 25% of our students are involved in a Greek organization. Um, we are an NCAA Division I school, part of the West Coast Conference, including 17 men's and women's sports. And a lot of those are nationally ranked, including our water polo team, which uh, finished number two in the nation yet uh, last year. Um, we also offer four distinct honors programs that are open. Most of them are open to students in any uh, major. Um, and then, of course, we offer a wide variety of professional theater and musical performances on campus throughout the year. So a lot of great things uh, for students to do outside of class. Um, in terms of scholarships and financial aid, we offer a lot of uh, different ways to make a high quality private uh, university education affordable to a wide variety of students. So you'll see here a listing of some of the different scholarship programs that we have here. Um, uh, one of them uh, being as high as $43,000 per year for all four years. And uh, then we also have some additional departmental and private scholarships. And then about 90% of our students receive uh, different types of financial aid in addition to these, uh, such as state and federal grants, uh, loans, work study, and um, other ways to help um, uh, make their uh, university program affordable. Some of the undergraduate admission requirements, uh, we are also a common application uh, school, so we do accept that in addition to our own online application. And then uh, starting uh, for this fall, we have become uh, SAT and ACT test optional. Um, optional um, uh, things, part of some of our um, application are letter of recommendations, uh, but we do require a personal statement and some of our programs like our music uh, programs require interviews or auditions uh, to be accepted. So if you'd like to learn more about us, uh, join us online. We have some great uh, virtual campus tours and we are opening the campus um, right now to some limited on-campus uh, tours as well. And this is one of the best ways to really find out um, if this is a place that's comfortable and familiar and uh, fits your needs. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me here. Um, I will be putting my contact information in the chat box in just a moment. Um, but thank you for your time and we look forward to hearing from you soon. All right, thank you so much. Uh, next up, we have Pepperdine University. All right, hello everyone. My name is Lexi and I'm an admission counselor here at Pepperdine University. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you all. I know that this is, for most of you, the start of your college search. And so it can be an exciting time and also a scary time, but hopefully this session um, is helpful for you all. So I'm gonna get my screen. All right, so in a nutshell, Pepperdine University is a small Christian liberal arts institution. We're located in Malibu, California. So you can see we've got a gorgeous campus. Um, I'm also an alumna of Pepperdine. And so I'm really excited to talk with you all a little bit about my alma mater. That being said though, today I've only got about six minutes to chat with you. And so I want to point your attention to the chat box um, I put in a link to all of our virtual resources. Today, I'm gonna to talk with you about Pepperdine and about our holistic review. But as you can see, this is just a small part of a larger presentation that we do called our application workshop. We hold those every Tuesday and every Thursday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Um, so if you click on that link, it'll give you all the information so that you can sign up and learn more in the next couple of months as you really get into that search. 
But like I said, I'm going to talk with you about Pepperdine. I know I mentioned we're small, liberal arts, Christian. Those are our big main points, and today I'm going to go over them. But before I do, I want to point your attention to our mission statement. Pepperdine is a Christian university committed to the highest standards of academic excellence and Christian values where students are strengthened for lives of purpose, service, and leadership. And that purpose, service, leadership, PSL, and not the latte, like, like we like to say in the office, um, is really what guides our institution. It's what guides our review. And hopefully you'll be able to see it in these next couple of slides. But speaking of academic excellence, let's talk about the classroom, the academic experience at Pepperdine. We are a smaller institution and that affords us a 13 to one student to faculty ratio. Um, our average class size is about 19 students. And for the student experience, what that means is a lot of discussion classes. This is actually a real class that you're seeing on the screen in that picture. Um, that's one of our great books classes where students read, they read little excerpts um, for homework come in and the whole class period is discussing with their peers. Um, we have 44 majors and 41 minors at Pepperdine. Um, our five most popular majors are business administration, psychology, biology, economics, and sports medicine. Um, but when I was a student, I was a sociology and Hispanic studies double major. So please, if you're looking at that screen and you're thinking, Lexi, there's no way I could be an economics major. Don't worry, we've got a couple other majors for you to choose from. Um, before I get into the religion, the religious portion of Pepperdine, what it means to be at a Christian institution, I do just want to highlight that we are a general education curriculum. And so what that means is that with those most popular majors, with those um, programs that you're interested in, you're also going to be taking our general education curriculum. So alongside your biology or your sociology class, you're also going to be really focusing on those soft skills of public speaking, critical thinking, and of course, writing. But back to my next slide, before I get into our religious curriculum that is part of our general education curriculum, I want to just highlight that at Pepperdine, you do not have to be a Christian. We don't ask our students to sign a statement of faith, um, but it is a big part of the student experience. And so I want to make sure that you guys know just a little bit about it. The first part of that Christian aspect to our campus is that we ask all students to, com to complete a religion sequence of three courses. The first two courses take you to the Bible. You'll analyze the Old Testament and New Testament, looking at the historical concepts, the um, geographical concepts, and so many other great aspects of the book, analyzing like you would any other novel um, in your English course. And then you'll take what you've learned in those first two classes and apply it to your Religion 301 course, which is Christianity and Culture. Aside from those classes though, we also ask our students to complete a convocation series. And so what that essentially is, is an hour devoted to your spiritual journey, whatever that means for you. Um, so you're asked to complete 14 units of convocation. Again, a unit is one hour. There are 14 uh, weeks in a semester. And so if you're planned out right, I never was, um, you can get all of your convocation completed by just attending one convocation per week. But we offer over 100 in a full semester, so it's very doable. And um, what you're looking at on the screen is an example of a convocation hour, a convocation unit event. Um, that's our club convo, surf convo. Um, so students drive to a beach that's quite close to campus. They hear a small sermon, and then they literally throw on wetsuits and run into the water. And Pepperdine provides all of it for the students. But I think if you talk to any students from Pepperdine, one, or I would say nine out of 10 of those students would say their favorite part of Pepperdine is the community. And so I wanna talk with you first about what that community looks like, but then also how that community comes together. So I mentioned we're a small campus. We've got an undergraduate population of about 3,400 students. Half of our student population is from California, no surprise. Um, but the other half of our population is from all over the world, really. Um, a half of our students identify as white and the other half as um, students of color. But 13% of our students do identify as international students. And I cannot stress enough how awesome it is to have that worldly perspective in the classroom. And then if you look down at the bottom left hand screen of the slide, you'll see that our students completed over 75,000 volunteer hours. And so pointing you back to that mission statement I mentioned earlier, we really do love purpose, service, and leadership, and it is evident all across our campus. But to talk a little bit about how students create that community, we have identity-based groups, service and social action clubs, student-led ministries. We also have Greek life on campus. We have special interest groups, which could literally be a pre-med club, a pre-law club, or a hammock club and a gaming club. 
Um, we are a smaller institution, but we still have 17 Division I athletic teams. Um, and then if you're like me, and maybe you're not at that D1 level, but you like to get active, we have 10 club and intramural sports as well. And quickly, I just want to mention one of the biggest highlights of my Pepperdine experience was our international programs. We have six international locations. Um, those locations are in D.C., um, four in uh, Europe, and then, of course, we have one in South America, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Now, we're consistently ranked in the top five, but this past year we were ranked number two in the nation, and that's because 80% of our students will study abroad at least once on um, their time at Pepperdine. And so here you can see some awesome pictures of our students really getting into um, and exploring the culture. But just before I log off, I want to talk about how we review students. So we do review students holistically. That means that we are looking at your transcript and test scores if you choose to submit them. But we're also looking to see who you are outside of the classroom. Um, and we'll get that from the Common App. Like most of my colleagues on this call, we use that to get all of our applications. Um, and then also I want to highlight in our academic review, please know that for the next two cycles, we are test optional. So we're really excited um, to have that available for our students. But that is it for me. I will go ahead and stop sharing and I will put my contact information into the chat for you all. If you have any questions, please feel free to use me as a resource. All right, thank you so much. If everyone could come back on, turn their camera back on in the same order, uh, if you could answer for our attendees, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process, starting with San Diego State University? Hello, everybody. Um, you know, my advice here is to start early. Don't wait until last minute of your senior year. Um, and also try to look beyond, um, I don't know, the, the where your friends are going or where everyone's talking about, because you really want to look to where you'll feel at home. Um, in normal times, I would say visit campuses because that's really where you can get a vibe. I know that especially with California, we're all pretty strict still, um, but if you can just do as much research as you can to just feel where, where will feel like home for you, um, try to look beyond those numbers and, you know, where your friends might be looking. My advice would be, uh, you know, I grew up in a very, very small town like you guys, probably some of you out there. So my advice to each and every one of you is don't be intimidated. Um, apply. Uh, I know that many of us sell ourselves sometimes short. So shoot for the biggest moon that you can and uh, don't be afraid of it. And don't be intimidated by the price tag because there's money out there for each and every one of you. So we look forward to seeing your apps. Um, I agree with Lorenzo. I'm also from a small town. And I think a big part of that is like selling ourselves short and like not um, thinking that we are quote unquote good enough for a lot of these big schools. And I would encourage you to think beyond that and really, really also encourage you to apply broadly, apply to different schools in different um, systems. There's the UC system, the Cal State system, the private institutions, right? So there's a lot of opportunities out there for you. Um, so don't hesitate to apply broadly and to overall be yourself and really show us who you are through your applications. Yes, I would echo what my colleague said and that, you know, just don't be intimidated. And I also with, grew up in a small town. Right now, the town I live in has 30 students in the graduating class for the entire county. Um, and so we know that this is a big jump, even if you're moving five miles or 500 miles away from home. But have fun. Um, enjoy it and know that every single one of us gave you our email address and we are here to connect with you. And so reach out to the college. Um, some may have a general email account. Some may have individual ones like we do, but we're here to help you. We are admission counselors and we're here to hopefully help you through that process. We have heard every question and we're here to answer every question. Yes, and I, I would really echo pretty much everything that everybody has already said already. It's some great, great advice, um, but I would probably most closely echo what Anna just said in that um, it's really a great idea to connect with your admissions counselor. They know your area. They know um, 
you know, the situation and conditions of your local area and what it takes to make a successful transition from where you're at um, to where you want to be, whether it's at our institution or another one, but also never rule out any uh, particular type of institution because um, whether you think you're only community college material, uh, UC material, or um, private university material, um, there really is a lot to offer um, many different types of students at all these different institutions. Um, certainly don't let the sticker price of a private institution scare you away because um, as you've heard already from the private institutions here, including ours, um, there's some fantastic financial aid that can help make um, a private university uh, education affordable to a wide range of students. Yes, and I'll echo everyone, but especially Anna, and just say when I talk to graduates and even in my own experience, there, there are so many resources for you that students just don't know are available, but a great way to learn about those resources are to reach out to your admission counselors, Google everything, reach out to us. There are no silly questions. We're here to help, and a lot of us got into this profession because we want to help, um, and so please don't ever um, uh, lose that resource. Uh, thank you to our experts, our panelists. Uh, when you leave here, there's a quick four questions you'll need to answer. We'd appreciate your feedback. I know that there were a lot of questions. So if uh, one of the counselors were not able to answer those, our representatives were not able to answer, please contact them individually. They put all of their contact information in that chat as well. Um, in a week, you'll be able to find the recording of this at strivescan.com. And that is also in the chat. Best of luck to our attendees and their journey. And thank you again to our expert panelists. Have a good day.